Hi, thanks for joining us today. I'm Christine Elizabeth. This is Amanda. She is a PNES warrior and overcomer. And you might ask, what does PNES stand for? If you're not aware, it stands for psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Today, I wanted to invite Amanda to come and share her personal story, her struggle, her hope, and her journey. So Amanda, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so the P my PNES journey started um, December 27th. I did a hospital study and or a video EEG at a hospital. I stayed there for three nights. Mm -hmm. And on um, New Year's Eve of 2020, I was told you no longer have epilepsy, you have PNES. I had no clue what that was. They gave me the discharge papers. I read it up. And um, so I started therapy in March. But before I started therapy, I also got pregnant in January. I found out I was pregnant and I was starting a PNES journey as well. And that was really difficult because I didn't know what to expect. I was really depressed in the beginning of 2020 because mm -hmm. being pregnant, having a new diagnosis, um, it was really stressful because I was really sick. I was in and out of the hospital. Doctors said they couldn't do anything. Um, and then the beginning of my pregnancy, I was doubting if I could be a mom to this baby or not because I was so sick. And um, being in and out of the hospital, I was I was doubting being a mom. Um, once when I started my therapy journey, it, it started helping. I was getting a decrease in my pseudo seizures because before therapy, they were between six pseudo seizures or more. It could be an all day thing where I was having pseudo seizures and I would have the ones where I would black out. Um, it was really scary because I was also growing a little human as well. Um, but when I started therapy in March, I saw a decrease with um, three to four pseudo seizures and still having them during the day and during my sleep. And then I was doing more research on what else um, women with PNES and that are pregnant. I couldn't find any research on that. Mm -hmm. um so I really had to rely on my faith and during that time was just to pray that I have a strong healthy baby and that she makes it through this pregnancy I make it through this pregnancy um that my pseudo seizures get better um therapy helped me cope with some things like how to breathe um how to ground myself but um where I was doing therapy at the therapist, they were um, students. So they didn't have experience with PNES. And that's where I was getting frustrated that these um, therapists couldn't relate to me because they haven't gone through it. Um, and so I wanted to search around, see what my other options were. Because after having my baby in September, I had a new therapist and she was pushing antidepressants. And I didn't want to go on antidepressants because at the time I was breastfeeding and I just didn't want to go back on medication. And when I asked how effective are the antidepressants will they work, it, the percentage was really low. I think it was lower than 30% of them working. And the side effects, there um, it was depression and just a lot. It's a long list. And I just didn't want to go through that. And I didn't like feeling pressured that I had to take antidepressants. So I was going on YouTube, looking up PNES, and then I saw a transfer out P PNES company in um, February, no, January of this year, I uh, messaged for a um, consultation and I've been doing that since. And I, I feel like the transfer out P PNES company has I have benefit from it way more than doing um the therapy that I was in. Hmm. 
because of the resources I was given or maybe this could be it. It was, I feel like with the transfer P, P, transfer out PNES company, I benefit more from it because um, the life coach went out of her way and she related because she also had um, P, PNES as well and was able to treat it. And I just saw more hope because with therapy, I wasn't really seeing hope. If I had mm. a great week, oh, you're doing better. You're doing so much better. If I had a terrible week, oh, you should think about the antidepressants. Um, mm. And there mm. wasn't other resources. And the thing, this, this March was going to be one year of therapy. And my pseudo seizures did decrease, which is great. It would be from two to three pseudo seizures, maybe one during the day, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't ready. And they said, since there's such a big improvement, my therapist said that there's such, there's been such a big improvement. You're ready to graduate. I was like, I'm not ready to graduate. I was like, I still have my journey is not done and I don't want to go through this alone. Mm -hmm. And so I felt with therapy, I was being pushed away because I wasn't going on antidepressants with um the transfer out PNES company that that person gave me hope and more faith and just made the journey a little bit more relatable as well Mm -hmm. um I feel like it's important to find someone that can relate to you at a certain level I mean Mm -hmm. we're all the same but it it helps and Now, I didn't finish therapy because I didn't want it to be like, yay, you're done. You graduated from therapy. I just didn't finish it. I just continued with the transfer out PNES um, life coach. And um, I've been continuing since, I want to say, February of this year. Mm-hmm. And I had my good and bad days. Um, especially with um, having a baby as well and also having PNES, but mm. I have seen a decrease in my pseudo seizures and I hope I can make it to where I don't maybe have zero to one. Mm. That's the goal. That's a wonderful, and that's a wonderful story. I'm so excited because you're right. There is so little research for people. Well, first of all, you were misdiagnosed with epilepsy. How long were you diagnosed with epilepsy for? Epilepsy, I was diagnosed at 10 months of age from a head injury, and I had that diagnosis till I was 27 years old till a neurologist, so I had a different neurologist, and he said, I don't think this is epilepsy. I think this might be stress seizures. I'm going to do a test on you, mm-hmm. and it turned out um, I have pseudo seizures, and during my whole epilepsy journey, mm-hmm. Before I found out PNES, it was really hard because I had um, a neurologist tell me at the age of 18, you will not be able to have kids. You will not um, be able to drive. So it was, I was really depressed for a long time because being told you can't have kids, you can't drive, like driving is where you get around kids is eventually the future um so when I got pregnant with my baby I was so scared because I thought I couldn't be a mom mm-hmm. um I really doubted my pregnancy and because nobody could relate to me what I was going through at the time so it was really hard to make any of my pregnancy like the the battles the mind battles I was going through doubting myself oh you can't be a mom or you shouldn't be a mom or it was a struggle but um the last I want to say January or February I wasn't thinking of keeping my baby because I was so scared of these pseudo seizures because I was having them so much and when I was at the hospital because I was having pseudo seizures the whole day from the morning till the end of the day it was no break I went to the hospital they're like we can't do anything and my mom my mom was there and she's like can you give her out of van like they're all like well there's a percentage that I could affect the baby but I was given out of van thankfully it did not affect my baby and um 
I was so desperate because I, I just felt so sick from mm. these pe- from these pseudo seizures. I was like, I don't want to keep my baby. Can I get rid of my baby? And thankfully, mm. <laughs> this was a big sign. The doctor said, no, we don't do that here. I was like, okay. So I just saw it as a sign to keep my baby. And I was hard on myself for having those thoughts of not wanting to keep my baby mm. at the time because I was so vulnerable, so desperate. I didn't know what to do. Um, but I, I just prayed and continued to have faith. And I prayed for a strong, healthy baby. And I got that strong, healthy baby. Mm-hmm. And it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It was hard doing that with a new diagnosis and mm-hmm. being a new mom or a first-time mom as well. But mm-hmm. I do it all over again. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, that's heart wrenching. Also, uh, for many reasons. One, because you're put in such a vulnerable situation, not believing that you could even have a child because you were misdiagnosed, because you were being treated for the wrong diagnosis. And granted, it takes time for these things to be understood. I'm not. I'm not shunning um, anybody in the medical community. In the same breath. I think that it's very important to say, um, you know, to acknowledge in the medical community that not everything is known. And if that not everything is known, there should be some hope there. Mm-hmm. There shouldn't be such a black and white, you can't do this, you won't be able to do this. Because mm-hmm. I was told the same thing, there's no recovery and there's no treatment. And that's true in the medical community, I didn't receive any options of treatment in my own journey. And, you know, I had to rely on, on things like YouTube and, um, and not specifically for PNES because, and mm-hmm. it's funny because um, with PNES, all I saw on YouTube, which is why I decided to create this channel, all I saw were people sharing their tragedies. It was all the stories mm-hmm. that I saw were people's actual seizures or the horror stories of the multitude of, of uh, traumas that had occurred at the hands of medical professionals, um, mm-hmm. the treatment, um, and there was just no hope. There was zero hope, but overcoming is overcoming to an extent. Mm-hmm. Of course, we have our own personal journey, which is why I'm so glad that you connected with your coach and had that connection because somebody does walk alongside of you. But overcomers in general, they have a very strong message and uh, they have their own story. So, and I love the fact that you're sharing with us your story because because of um, not giving up, I mean, Mm -hmm. despite, you know, despite having no hope given to you, hope actually being taken away from you Mm -hmm. and then just feeling so desperate, you know, you're in such a, such a, um, Oh my gosh, that pivotal moment of almost depression sounded like, Mm -hmm. you know, where you didn't really know what to do and you held on and you just, you kept going and persevered through it despite, and you have this beautiful baby girl. She Mm -hmm. is absolutely precious. Oh, but I mean, it's such a great, great, great journey. And I, I, I see so much strength in you. I get to experience that strength when we speak. It's just, I don't know. I think the last time we spoke, what led up to um, this interview was your perspective of it. You had such a great perspective. You weren't allowing all the things to happen to keep you in a victim role, even Mm -hmm. though there's a lot that has happened to lead up to. And I know you say uh, pseudo seizures, because that's probably what your doctor told you. I say Mm -hmm. say genetic non-epileptic seizures. And it's potato. It's there's stress induced, trauma induced seizures. Um, for yeah. uh, a red flag, I, I kind of like squashed all the PNES derivatives and just say, this is a red flag disorder. Something's going mm-hmm. wrong either in your physical body, your emotional body, your soul, something's going wrong. So yeah, you were just such a shining light with your hope and, and you didn't let it, um, you didn't let your past dictate. I mean, you just, when you shared what you see as your future. And I want to ask you that now, but when you shared with me what you saw your future to be, it was so bright and shiny. It didn't have all the muck from Mm -hmm. the past. 
So, I mean, it was so inspiring that I'm like, people need to hear this because you have mm-hmm. a very long journey, a very long mm-hmm. journey of misdiagnosis, then people telling you things that they shouldn't have said uh, based off of that wrong diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Being in a completely isolated situation where you did, you overcame, you overcame something that nobody could guide you through because nobody around you, I mean, you relied solely on your faith and that's fantastic. So share with me a little bit about your vision for the future. I would have to say just probably like to be more independent because right now I do rely on help with, with my daughter and help with myself as well. But just to, right now in the future, the goal is to be more independent and um, hopefully be fully treated from PENES. And then we'll just see what happens from there. Yeah. What are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned, either from therapy, from coaching, on your own? Tell us, share with us some of those things. That no matter how big the storm is, and how long it lasts, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There really is. As long as you have faith and you keep on fighting and trying to find a solution to the problem, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. I love that. Solution-mindedness is so powerful. Uh, so one thing that I've, I've really um, appreciated about you know our conversations is that you always have this perspective. I mean, you never come, even... It's amazing because a lot of people, even myself, I have days where I'm just like, I'm, I can't even look up. I need somebody else to help mm-hmm. me look up. And mm-hmm. I've just never seen that in our conversations. So how is it that you have so much hope? Cause I feel like I have those days where I don't want to get out of bed either, or even want to be a mom. Like, I'm just like, I'm checked out, but I take those days off. I'll tell my fiance, I'm checked out. Like I want, I need you to have the baby today. Like where I'm just mentally drained. But what helps me is that I just try to keep on moving forward. I don't want to be stuck in the past. I don't want to keep on living the past. And now um, I really focus around on my environment now and my surroundings and the people that are around me that makes a big impact. Mm. as well so if I notice um let me see if someone my problem is with um just trusting people and um being open with them so I started to be more open with people and then depending how those people react that that have been around me if I see if they're true or not I just keep my distance and just keep on moving forward and if they're um, not true, you mean? If they're not true, yes. And then with social media, I'm on social media all the time. So I recently, I just cleaned out my social media. I cleaned out my YouTube. I cleaned out my Instagram. Um, now, how I have things to help me keep on moving forward and stay positive is that my environment, which is also social media is a big one of them. Mm-hmm. I... Um, I follow people or influencers to have a positive impact, not mm-hmm. to where I'm, I'm not following influencers where I'm envying them, where I want to be them, where it makes me feel bad because I don't have what they have. Um, so I just cleaned it out and I just, now I'm just focused on things to better me and to um, continue giving me hope with my journey. Mm. That's so exciting. I so agree and appreciate that because I really think what we put in our eyes and our ears and our stomach makes such a big impact in our life. And if we're Mm -hmm. not intentional about that, and I just love your intentionality, you just went in and swept it out and Mm -hmm. you had a criteria if they're not benefiting you. And it sounds like you even did that in your social circle, your, um, you know, family and friends circle that you swept out. Um, and so how did you use, like, what kind of criteria did you use for that? Um, nothing specifically. It was just a YouTuber that really, um, like influenced me or really motivated me, motivated me because she's so positive. Her name is, um, Linda's son. Mm -hmm. She, a fitness YouTuber and 
the way she's just so calm and the way she's so honest and genuine I was like I need that more in my life I need more people like that even if it's just on social media with people that I'm following I need more genuine honest people that are talking about their journeys or people that are just uplifting and positive or even funny I love funny things like I like comedy but just surrounding myself with a positive environment has Mm -hmm. really helped a lot that's fantastic thank you for sharing that with us oh I love that I I'm 100% behind that and yes whoever it is that is our influencer whether it's family whether it's social media whether it's at work whoever it is we Mm -hmm. have the choice even if they're family, even if they're in their same households, we yeah. can decide, you know, that they're not going to be as much of an influencer as, mm-hmm. as somebody else. We can ex- escort them, you know, farther away from, from our sphere of influences, so to mm-hmm. speak. So that's really good. That's very impactful. So is there anything else that you want to share as far as hope for people's journeys? Um, this is for women that are pregnant and are dealing with a medical condition, mm. either yes or something else, you like women can get through it. We're really strong. It's just all about your mindset, faith, or just being more positive and focused. The pregnancy can be enjoyable, even if you have um, a medical condition. And that was something that I had to figure out on my own was just don't be so sad or beat yourself up because you have a medical condition where people said that you couldn't have kids. Take it as um, a huge blessing to be able to grow a human inside and um, just moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. That was so good. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for taking this time for sharing with us your struggle, your hope and your journey. Thank you for that last message, especially because you had, you overcame something that nobody could walk you through. Mm -hmm. And um, for you to be able to offer that encouragement and hope is, is really profound and powerful. So thank you. Thank you, Christine. Yes. And viewers, if you've enjoyed this, please share it. If you feel that it would inspire hope in somebody else, um, if you like it, Go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you are into hope and education and uh, people's stories of overcoming because that is our primary focus here for you to have hope and help for your journey. So take care. We will see you next time.